Hey friends, so we are starting with the topic of double integral and today we are covering the most important concept of double integral or I would say it is the start of double integral because if we don't know how to evaluate the integration then there is no part of solving it. So what I found over the years is this some student they find it very difficult to evaluate the integration due to the order so they do not understand which order should take first so to integrate with respect to x or y or some other variable so in the first lecture today we are gonna make it simplified and we are gonna learn that how to decide that order and for that here i have three cases for you so can you see the first case here i have considered the integration of function f of x comma y where we have the double integration and the limits of first integral is f1 x to f2 x and the second one is from a to b now the thing is how to evaluate this first one and you can see that in the second and third integral i've changed the limits and i've kept the same function so guys to understand the order of the integration i'm gonna take one example which is based on the single integration so by taking the reference from the single integration it will become very easy for you all to understand the order of integration so let's take one function f of x and let's integrate it over the range a to b with respect to x so guys do you remember this type of integration where we were evaluating this function uh, using the formulae of integration and after getting some answer let's say here we get let's say some phi of x in that answer we used to substitute this value of a and b so do you remember we always used to substitute this value of b and a in place of x so by doing that we were getting phi of b minus phi of a because we always substitute the upper limit first minus then the lower limit so it means whenever we were integrating any function with respect to x that time we were substituting this upper and lower limit in x so i can say here that this a is nothing but x equal to a and this b is also x equal to b that means we have the limit for x from a to b so here you just remember that whenever we are integrating with respect to x we substitute value of x in the function so now let's come to our part so here can you see that we have a limit from a to b and for other integration it is from f1x to f2x now since guys here we have from f1x to f2x this will be the limit for y because obviously we cannot say that it is for x because uh, let's say we have two variables x and y so one is a function of x then we say that this limit is given for y and the remaining is for x so now it becomes simple that since we have function of x as a limit so we will treat this as limit of y and the constant will treat it as limit of x so in short we will integrate this function with respect to y and after integrating with respect to y first whatever answer we'll get in that answer will put value of y as f1 of x and f2 of x and then to that function we will again integrate with respect to x and that time we'll put the value of x so guys to decide this order it's quite simple you just have to observe the limits so in the limits you find the function of x and if let's say the other limit is constant so in that case that function of x we treat it as y and the constant we treat it as x so here we'll integrate with respect to y first and then with respect to x now if you'll see this limit geometrically then how does it look so we say that whenever we integrate with respect to y first that time on that region we take a strip parallel to y axis 
so uh, we'll understand that uh, geometric meaning of the function uh, on the next page so let's say for this function i have some area so here i'll show you let's say this is x and y axis and on this x and y axis let's say this is one region and on this region to evaluate the integration what we'll do is we'll take one strip which is parallel to y axis so whenever we take a strip parallel to y axis we find the y coordinates of endpoints so these y coordinates of endpoints become the limit for first integral so this f1 of x and f2 of x has come from the endpoints of this y and to get this value of x we move this strip parallel to itself so it means here i'll show you let's say this is a strip so it will move over this region parallelly like this so it is moving vertically so when it moves vertically over the region so we'll take the endpoints of that region so let's say here we have some value of x as a and value of here value of x as b then we consider this value of x as a and b as a limit for x so guys here i have shown you this integral geometrically now let's come to the second case so in the second case we have the same function and limit is from f1 y to f2 y and other one is constant so as i have explained you that whenever we have function of y it means this is the limit of x so it means we are going to integrate with respect to x first and the constant part so we'll treat it as a limit for y and then we'll integrate with respect to y so if we'll see this geometrically then here we will consider a strip which is parallel to x axis so hence we are integrating with respect to x first and then with respect to y now let's come to the last part so here you can see that both the limits are constant so whenever we have constant limits in both the integration or in double integral that time whatever is the order given let's say we have been given dx and dy so we'll integrate this function with respect to x first and then with respect to y because we have the constant limit so that time we'll follow the order which is given in the question but what can happen let's say uh, by using this order as it is we are getting some complicated integral or uh, we are not able to evaluate the integral in that case we change the order so at that time we take dy first and then dx so it means we integrate with respect to y first and then with respect to x and obviously when we change this dx and dy that time we have to change this limits as well so we change the order in case the limits are constants and they are not evaluating by taking the normal flow so guys here i have covered all the three cases which are possible with the double integral so i i hope that you all have understood how to evaluate the double integral or how to change the order of integration so in this chapter we are going to see that how to evaluate the different different cases and we will be also having the different curves for which we will draw the curve and then we'll decide the limits for double integral and for evaluating that we will consider a strip either parallel to x axis or parallel to y axis to get the answer now to make you understand these three cases i'll take i'll take one example for you all guys so here i have the integration from 1 to 2 and then from 0 to x dy dx x 1 upon x square plus y square now guys here by looking at the limits we can easily say that one of the limit is x and other one is constant so whenever we have limit for x it comes under the first case so whenever we have function of x we treat it as the value for y so here i'll say it is the limit of y then obviously this is the limit of x so now we will evaluate the integration with respect to y first and then with respect to x because here we have limits for y 
so by evaluating this function with respect to y here we will keep this first integration as it is it's 1 to 2 and the function 1 upon x square plus y square it is similar to the formula of integration 1 upon x square plus a square so it is 1 by a tan inverse x upon a so here since i am evaluating with respect to y so y is my variable and x will be treated as constant so that would become 1 upon x tan inverse of y by x and limit is from 0 to x and guys this dx is as it is so now here by evaluating the integration i have substituted the limit of y now let's uh, let's change the value of y with this upper and lower limits so this will give us integration from 1 to 2 1 by x as it is this will become tan inverse of x upon x that is tan inverse of 1 and you all know that it is pi upon 4 minus when we'll put 0 so 1 by x as it is and the tan inverse of 0 will evaluate to 0 and dx so now pi by 4 minus 0 is pi by 4 so i will take pi by 4 outside and now only 1 upon x remains inside the integration so the integration of the function 1 upon x is log of x or we say log mod x so limit is from 1 to 2 so this will give us pi upon 4 and this is log of 2 minus log of 1 and we know that log of 1 is 0 so the final answer is pi by 4 log of 2 so here we have seen the concept of how to in evaluate the double integral and then we have seen a uh, numerical which is based on the evaluation so guys i'm sure that you like this video and if you want to learn more lectures more concepts of double integration then stay tuned to ekeda.com you can log into ekeda.com to get all the lectures of double integral at one place you can also follow me on facebook as well as on twitter so keep learning and see you in the next video thank you